you want to talk about how to like how to spot fakes? Sure. Let's let's give some people some some ideas if if because I think you know it, it's it's not that we're trying to tell people how to make better fakes because we know how to spot them, but I think it's also helping the consumers out there that are trying. I mean, don't be wrong. We're all trying to find stuff and get our hands on stuff, and you gotta you have to know what to look for. You got to kind of know those telltale signs. So, yes, kind of give us some idea of what you our immediate red flags. Sure. So like you said, I do have to be slightly coy because pretty much every time I do an interview or say something that gets printed somewhere, it inspires a new faker. So we we have to sort of bridge, walk the tightrope between vigilance and inspiring too many new criminals. So with sort of spotting fakes, one thing I like to say is it's sort of, it's it's sometimes, it's an easier question to answer by starting to talk about what not to look for. I get tons and tons of people contacting me or, or flagging me in some post somewhere saying, hey, you look at this bottle. This is obviously fake. It's got a smeared laser coat. Or look at the label. It's wrinkled. Or there's double foil is a common one, right? And, and the double foil one's a good example because you got to think about these mass production bottling lines. Sooner or later, they're going to stick two foils onto a bottle by mistake. But why would a faker ever do that? You know, nobody that's spending time making fakes is going to perfectly replicate a bottle, but not be able to do a laser code that isn't smeared or they're going to, you know, so, so, so sort of the first way to approach it is to th think like a faker is you look at a bottle and you say, are these sort of signs on it that make me concerned? If I was faking this, would I not be able to get rid of that? I mean, it's really as simple as that, you know? Laser codes is always a big thing. Everybody's worried about laser codes. And if you think about it, the laser coder is just a little gizmo that sits next to a conveyor belt. The bottles pass by it and it goes, zh, 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 codes them. Sometimes it's ink, sometimes it's etching. But those can, things can malfunction. The bottle can be at a weird angle. So you sometimes get those bottles where it looks like it's like alien writing, the laser code. I've seen them. I, I always thought it was like, well, you could tell that it just kind of like whips by it real quick, but sometimes it, yeah, it looks either like hieroglyphics or Arabic yeah. or something like that. Yeah, or maybe the, who knows like how, you know, what actually happened there. But again, if you're faking, you're not going to make that mistake. So then on the flip side of that, yes, most in the United States, most of the fakes we see, if not all of them are refills. An old bottle is used, simply refilled and resealed. To like completely contradict what I just said, yeah, like stains on a bottle, sure. Like, you know, you, you we've all poured plenty of bottles of whiskey, you get the label stained and you see those drips that run down it from the lip of the bottle vertically down the label. That's an obvious, it's not a tip off, but it's a, it's a red flag. And you just sort of, you have to really know what am I supposed to see? And the great thing, Google's your friend. You know, any any bottle that that you're suspicious about, there's going to be uh, hundreds of pictures of what it's supposed to look like on Google. And it's really just as basic as, as comparing. Mm -hmm. 